Pond people, welcome back. John G, Modern Design Aquascaping. Our team builds custom ponds, fountains, and waterfalls in the lightning. Just kidding. Seriously though, this is part two of an amazing, beautiful, incredible, unbelievable, undeniably fantastic pond project in Soddy Daisy, Tennessee. Do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, stick around. I'm gonna get out of the rain while you guys enjoy the show. I'm thinking, I know this puts us far away from our power source, but if we dig this down to the right height for the aqua blocks, gravel, and a thin layer of water on top, we can go back the distance of the aqua blocks and then notch down for the vault into the back of it and do a normal vault drop like we do in the pondless waterfall. That'll stop it from lifting up that extra six inches of the vault height. So push back, paint out the square of the blocks, cut that out. We'll just dig this in, enlarge this edge of the pond and then sink the vault and rock back around it. It doesn't really matter what it ends up looking like yeah. over here because it's not, it's making the pond bigger instead of smaller. Yeah. I think that's the end goal for me. I know we got the extra rubber. We're over delivering. We're learning from our mistake. It's not really a mistake. It was, yeah. Tried something new. There it is. Works, works fine. This takes up half it's, our deep section. It's going to take some time. So let's just make the time, do the deed and hey, you guys let us know what you think. You can see what we did over here, how much of the deep end it took up. You're gonna see the change that we make over here. You know, there's there's some things about this because usually when we put the, the pondless vault in, we draw the water in close to the skimmer box to make the skimmer work better. Now this isn't gonna take away from the function, functioning of the pond because the skimmer normally pulls the water that it pulls. Anyways, a lot of ponds don't even have a jet system. So when it comes down to it, we're gonna pull water in here and it's gonna come out of jets over there. We're gonna have waterfalls coming down here that are going in a skimmer. It's changing up the flow pattern the way we had initially thought it through. But anyways, you guys give us feedback. Let us know what you think. Do you think it was a waste of time? Do you think it was a good idea? Do you think it was worth the effort? It's gonna cost us about two and a half hours to make this change. And I think that it's important. These people paid a lot of money for a really nice modern design project. And at the end of the day, I need to know in my heart that we gave them our best, so. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get busy. Some of us are already getting busy and some of us are still talking to you guys out there in the universe. So I'm gonna join this fellow. I would say the experience was just about as perfect as, as you could get. The guys did exactly what they promised they would do. They worked hard, they worked fast, they worked long hours if they had to. <laughs> What's okay. happening? Morning to you. Morning, morning. Tell me a oh. story. All right, folks, where are we going to start? We got a lot of stories. I don't There's know. I'll sit right here and tell thing. me whatever you want to tell me. All right, guys. So this is our, our fish cave over here. This thing that dad's sitting on, and this thing turned out insane. You can actually fit at least two of us if you pick the larger ones. If you pick the ones that are more my size, you can probably get three to four of us in this cave. This thing is huge. We've got like more than two feet of clearance in this spot. We've got lights coming in in the back, but one of the weirdest things about this, we had this spot picked out. We had it dug originally for the cave and coming in here building to it. And it got a little more clearance under it than we wanted. Uh, so one of the biggest challenges I think we're gonna have is naturalizing the top of this stone. It's gonna be pretty fun. I don't think it's gonna be that challenging, honestly. But when water level fires up, we're somewhere in here, all the stuff in the stream, when that pulls down, we're probably gonna have exposed top of our fish cave rock. And that's right where our waterfalls are coming in. So doing some nice cresting stones and probably some aquatic plants, potentially a piece of driftwood, because this is now going to be what looks like additional stream. 
So when the fish go into their cave, it's literally going to be like they're swimming underneath of the stream. It's going to be fuck wild. It's going to be super cool. And I got to be honest, when I first looked at it, I thought we could have done a little better on the construction end of things. I thought we could have sunk this down another eight to 12 inches and had a different scenario. And after listening to him explain about what he's thinking with it, I'm super excited to see how this thing's going to turn out. So today, man, we got the team going down here. I feel like everything's detailed out. We're getting lights put in. We made the change with the intake for the jets. And I am so happy about the way that turned out. We we burned an hour building it down here. We burned another hour redigging out the side and another hour rebuilding it three hours later. I'm super happy. The deep end, what do you think? A third bigger now? At least. That we moved it out of here. It really made this pond feel bigger. At we least. had the extra liner over there. That turned out great for me because we didn't actually use up any of the pond by doing what we did. We did use up some time. So if you're running on a tight timeline, that wouldn't have been something we could do. But on a project like this, I think we made a good choice. I feel like I learned something new, which happens every single job, even still yet to this okay. day. But I'm happy about everything that got done yesterday. And I mean, that that aside from the time we lost by doing it, by learning that lesson, we still had a killer day yesterday. We got some beautiful stone set. That rock is just absolutely fabulous, man. It's got this weird ridge that runs all the way through it. It looks like somebody just took a paintbrush to it and made a mark. It's just killer. And I know how sweet that's gonna be. All the little pockets that you guys have got for lights, a, a light underneath of that fish cave, casting a glow across the bottom. Every, It's just coming together, guys. Stay tuned. This is an awesome project. Our team really killed it yesterday, man. Hats off to the entire group. Just one thing I do want to. Go say it, over say it, well, do so. it, say it, tell them. What he did by moving this jet over here, not only creating a bunch of extra work that fortunately <laughs> we have time for, but we were literally looking at from the corner of this rock to the corner of this rock was the face of what we had to do to retain this jet system. So everything from here over was rocks all the way up to here. So it literally would have been 12 inches deep for this seven foot by seven foot area going back into there. And he literally gained one, two, three, almost four feet wide by two and a half to three feet of actual three foot deep section. Mm -hmm. And since we were already finished most of the way around with our top rocks and we did not have our interaction stone, this was the only place, ladies and gentlemen, that this thing could go. And how do you think you're gonna feel if you're sitting on this guy and you're looking down into water that is this deep all the way around it? It really saved the, not only the interaction stone, but almost, you know, added a third of our deep section over here. So yeah, it was a lot of work. It yeah, was it a was learning awesome. curve, learning experience, <clears throat> but it was the right, right move there. Guys, we're always getting Turned better, out man. Great. Never stop growing, never stop learning. Just analyze what you're doing. Yep. And sometimes you gotta back up and punt, just saying. That's old man wisdom for you there, I'm out. the side of Nick's face. This is Nick's eyeball. Here, look here. Up Nick's nose. Probably dusty. You're probably dusty. Everybody wants to see that. Nick's face. Yeah. And the crazy <laughs> hair thing. I don't know what you call that. A swoop. What I want to talk to you guys about in this short segment is the lighting design. So most of the time with our lighting systems, we want to make sure that we don't have every single square inch of this looking like a runway in the middle of the night where every gravel is at this full brightness. You want to have dim spots, even dark spots, unless, you know, specifically requested, we do not light them like a runway. So what we've been doing is we just kind of walking around with our lights. We put in extra conduit everywhere because what you definitely don't want is to get to the very top doing your edge work and start doing your lighting system and everything and then realize this would have been the perfect spot for light. All we got to do, tear out these six boulders and all these this gravel that's backfilling behind them and we can get a conduit in there for ease of access later. So what we have right now, you want to make sure there's different elevations. So we've got only two lights so far in the bottom of the pond and we're thinking that's probably going to be good because if you lay them out and you look at what you got, this one that's going to move a little, it's pointing kind of diagonal this way. You've got one scotched in the cave pointing out. That's almost gonna illuminate the entire bottom of this pond, but it is going to leave some gentle, subtle dark spots and dim spots. Stepping up to shelf number two. We've got, whoa, 
We've got light over here and this guy that's pointing that way. We've got one over there that's shining all, all the way across. And then we've got one under the interaction stone that you guys are standing on in this video right now, pointing straight across this way. So that is going to leave some nice dark section right over there. It's gonna leave some dark section probably right in front of the skimmer box where everything pulls into there. It's gonna leave a little bit of dim spots off to the sides. And then we're gonna have a good bit of this stuff lit with just these three lights on top. So, so far, even in this 16 by 20 pond, three feet deep, we've got five lights that are going to do an amazing job of lighting this thing up at night and not making it look like a perpetual sun in the middle of the yard. So we're gonna get onto these lights, get final adjustments, show you guys a little about what we do in the cave and opportunities that you can have to make these lights even cooler eh, before the pond's filled. It's a lot harder later. So get your plan together before you fill it up. Always, if you can, conduit's not that expensive. Sleeve in some extra conduit in spots you think you might need lights because we're only probably gonna use half of the conduit that we put in here to actually put lights in. We just wanna have the availability later. So yeah, get lighting. They even took the time, we have a five-year-old grandson that also lives on the property next door, and they took the time to show him everything, answer his questions, and they took time out of the day just to explain things to a five-year-old that just amazed me that they had that much patience. He's saying there's a unicorn right here. This rabbit's gonna get him. It's gonna tear him up. He's going around the corner. And that thing sure is slow. The rabbit's gone into his garage. Cody's going in for the kill. We're having rabbit nuggets tomorrow for sure. <laughs> We're about to see Cody fall backwards and then get dragged. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we just we just wanted to share with you guys a little bit about what goes on in these projects, random little things that are going to take a lot of time. So when you're working on a hillside that is this steep, especially with the pond being scooted back into it, it's really going to be pretty intense, which you guys have probably saw from the dig of this pond, how much retention you are going to have to make it actually look natural in this scenario. So you can see we've got rocks that are like 15 feet outside of the pond, meandering the way through there, creating different flats and making it not look like a foreign just rock hole in the middle of this hillside. So we're gonna have the same thing going over there. It is just a lot of retention, dirt work. Speaking of dirt work. Dirt work, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take you up there in a minute and share with you guys one of the big surprises that clients have sometimes on these projects. And I think it's an important thing to cover on the front and that you don't realize. Dirt work on this job, who would have known it? The worst soil that I've ever dug in in Tennessee that still had dirt in it that wasn't a solid rock is the only thing I've ever hit that was worse than this. All of the limestone in here is so sharp. It has added almost two full days to our crew's excavation process here. We've had to use rock pad. There's been a lot of work that's gone into it. And not only that, but we've had to bring back in loads of topsoil into the flower beds around the water feature so that something will actually grow in here later. But that's not even what I'm wanting to talk to you about. What we're doing today to finish out that side 
over on this side, obviously another day of building wing walls and rock formations and outcroppings. But we're gonna get in here, we're gonna start doing bib liners. I don't have to teach you guys about what bib liners are. We got videos on bib liners. We're gonna do a lot more lighting. Daniel and the guys were in here all day yesterday working on lighting, working on details. We've also got a video with lighting tips and tricks. If you guys wanna know more of the how-to stuff on that, you can hit a link on that stuff. But I wanna walk up here and show you guys the pile of excavated soil that we have because that's the shocker. And we're not a hauling company. When we do our projects, we get to the end, there's gonna be a pile of dirt. We might make arrangements with the hauling company if we hit that on the front end, but when you've got a big piece of property, usually we're gonna do what we call burn the dirt on site, which means it's gonna get spread out somewhere on site. And if you don't find a place where you want us to spread it with the skid steer, it's gonna be left in a mound. You're gonna to have to hire a company to haul that dirt away. And I'm guessing there is probably 100 cubic yards of soil in a pile up here spread out down the hill. Let's check it out because it's something you wanna know about. This is what you get, guys. And we've already taken a lot of this soil and spread it down the property line down here in a layer about this thick. But you don't think about what it's gonna take. I'm gonna guess there's three to four tri-axle truckloads of soil here if you don't want to spread it out on site, you're going to have to hire somebody to haul it away. That could be a potential added expense for your project. So keep that in mind, whether you're bidding the job or whether you're hiring somebody to do the job, make sure that you have this, the soil issues taken care of because you don't want a giant mountain of soil to be a bad taste in your mouth at the end of an awesome water feature project. So we're going to get busy, go back to what we're doing. Unless Tristan has something else to say, I'm through yapping. I'm going to do something. The thing that surprises me is every day you go out there, you see a different view of things and you see where they actually took time to place things, you know, because when you see it for the first time, you're just overwhelmed by big picture. But as you walk around and interact with the feature, you see a lot more little things that are fun surprises, you know. They did over and beyond what I even expected. Just the detail and the different waterfalls. And like you said, you'll find a little different detail that they did. But I feel bad that I didn't notice when they were here that I haven't told them. That's just super cool. I just had to check in and see what was going on over here with you guys. Checking the camera. Yeah, check the camera up there, buddy. Huh. Yeah. Huh. yeah. It's a weird letter you got there. Yeah. Letter named That's, Daniel. Letter Daniel. That's right, buddy. All right, well, it's madness. That's what I gotta say, it's madness. It's our last day. We got so much detail stuff to get done. I'm gonna let Tristan talk to you guys about all the stuff that he and Cody and Daniel did. The team was just going in every direction yesterday. This is our last day to finish clean, edge check, wrap it up. I got to rake and move rocks and all this other stuff. There's the extra 10 tons of boulders that we got. Guys, we bought a lot of extra rocks so that we have variety. 
That's the difference between being minimalistic and building a massive piece of art. We wanna make sure that we have exactly what we want, and we did. Now I gotta deal with the extra pieces, so I'm gonna go clean all that up. Tristan's got some killer stuff to share with you guys. Don't forget, follow these guys on Facebook. I don't get the opportunity to work with my boys very often. Usually I'm over there and they're over there. This project's been really cool, and uh, I've enjoyed getting to see what you guys do, and I love what you're putting together. I'm gonna go rake dirt and let you guys put the last bit of magic touches on this. And, finish this puppy up so like comment subscribe do the facebook thing with them because tristan does some cool live videos along the way and he'll uh -huh. share what's happening with the boys in his neck of the woods while i'm gone in my neck of the woods john g out all right fellas so this is what we got me cody daniel we spent all day yesterday in these pools so one of the biggest parts about having so many different little intricate waterfalls one of the biggest key points in this is they did not want super wide, high water volume, loud, crashing, ridiculous waterfalls that make a crazy statement. They wanted intricate, delicate pitcher pours, all kinds of different split waterfalls everywhere from shelf to shelf. They really wanted all kinds of different sounds. And that is a giant, giant portion of what I love about this is the sounds of water. For those of you who haven't, if you want any elaboration on that, go click on my article in Pond Trade Magazine up here. I wrote an awesome article for the sounds of water and what we do to try to manipulate it. But really in this scenario, it's not that difficult, guys. We've got a waterfall there, there, and there just on this shelf. We've got different depths of water. It's going to create the most amazing song from these waterfalls. But to do that takes so much work. We literally spent all day yesterday and I'd like to say that we're finished, but we're not. We've got touch-ups we still gotta do. We got spots where once we saw the water moving with some low flow, we knew we needed to add a rock and foam that in to push the water off to another side to get it to go where you need to go. So adding all of these water, little waterfalls, it looks great when you get done, but the amount of detail that goes into making sure the water can actually fall over those things. You don't think about it, but having a 15 foot, 10 foot wide stream in here, you've got so much stuff you actually have to seal because every spot that you have that doesn't actually hold that water in there nice is going to take a little bit of your water flow away. It's gonna disappear behind the rocks. And if you've got five or six of those along every shelf, you're barely gonna have any water making it over to your three split falls. So yeah, we got a lot of detail work to do. We're done with most of it. We've got this beauty right here. I cannot wait to put this guy. We're gonna tuck him somewhere in this corner and just make it absolutely crazy because the homeowner here, he's doing his own aquatic plantings. He is amazing at it. I saw his previous features and holy cow, this thing is going to be epic when he gets done. But one of the things that I really wanted with one of these pieces of driftwood once I found this out was I wanted to have a super wide spot in the stream where you can have a piece of driftwood tucked in and then he can come back in with his aquatic plantings, plant them all in the root system of that thing. And when he gets done, it's gonna look like it's been there for a hundred years and that's gonna be sweet. So uh, dad's uh, ruining my sound. So I guess I should just hop off here. You guys watch what's gonna happen because it's detail time. had bad experiences with builders and other contractors, but these guys, I'm telling you, I would highly recommend them. You're gonna have a good outcome. I like the sound. Mm -hmm. That's what I was just thinking. Too. Yeah, that's the sound we want it, Tristan. Okay, thank you guys. Love it, love it, man. Did a lot yeah. of Look at it coming over here to the yeah. side too. You nailed it. it, man. Look, you did nail it. Look <laughs> at it. You, you did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. Yeah, that's cool. What you guys that? did it. That's great. I just love all the different channels. And that's what I wanted was just the different little creeks and yep. the different sounds. And yep. that's because I was scared we were just going to get one waterfall like of sound. Like the little spill yeah. over here to the side, you know, it's just, that's just cool, you know, because that's more natural, isn't it? When you have something like that, that's yeah. a lot of real estate. Look, look at him, look at him. 
Yeah. Thumbs oh, up. Yeah. Thumbs up from the boss. Right? Yeah. Owen serves it all right there. Yeah, we can go. Yeah. Wrap it I don't know, man. That must... Spring fed. You know Spring what? Spring fed pond. What do you What do you think that jet's for in there? It's right here. It's, where it's right there somewhere. It's right here. That's cool. You know what that's for? What? Circulation. It's, it's right here. Feel right here. Let me see. Let me see. Holy cow! It's got power. I wonder if the fish are gonna play in there. Try to do that again. I'm not doing it again. All right, one more time. Look at that. Oh, it's gone. Tristan's messing with us over there. He unplugged the jets. He's behind you. He's behind you over there. Messing with <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First thing I want to do, shout out to the entire team. I'm telling you what, man. Cody, Hunter, Daniel, Tristan, Nick. Ditch witch operator. That's you. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Bottom of the barrel, guys. Look at this. If our team can't feel pride about that, I don't know what else there is. People doing what people do. Loving nature, spending time in the water. That is why I love what I do every day is because this is what it creates. The difference between a sterile water swimming pool and a living ecosystem. When's the last time you saw people climbing all over a pool, checking it out, enjoying how amazing it was? I gotta say like, comment, subscribe. We put a ton of time and energy. Our team worked our butts off to build this and we worked our butts off. Do a great job of capturing this experience to share it with all of you out there. This is a YouTube job. Yeah. This is actually a yeah, project that. that came from somebody like you watching us on our channel and we end up in their yard building a water feature. You could be next. It's been horrible, so terrible. Changing oh, the, the hospitality beer. has been <laughs> god off. Oh, jeez. Man, where, I got nothing. Where, it's been where, a blast. Where, you guys have a good one. I'm telling you what, <laughs> there's more of that. Guys, stay tuned. You guys have Digging fun. should go a little faster Nick's, while you're at Lowe's. Nick's not coming back. <laughs> yeah, it should go a little faster since this is half done. Anyways, all right. Well, fine. Bye.